House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he now has the votes necessary to raise the debt ceiling. Representative James Comer says he's found six additional Biden family members that received money from the Chinese Communist Energy Company after four banks complied with subpoena orders. Trump discusses how to eradicate homelessness and support American vets. And Vladimir Putin goes to Ukraine to show the world he's in control. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. Also, at the end of this, I'll tell you how we're giving away $10,000 in cash to people right here on my YouTube channel. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy of California has claimed that he has the 218 votes needed in order to raise the debt ceiling. McCarthy blamed Biden for recklessly spending and claimed Republicans will combat it in the future by limiting spending in Washington, saving taxpayers money, uh, and growing the U.S. economy. Biden responded the, to this by saying, Republicans are holding the country hostage and seek to default and ruin the country. So I'll let you decide what the truth is. The stock market was slightly down today. Gold and silver were up and Bitcoin was up over 3%. The shakiness is likely over the U.S. Senate needing to finalize the debt ceiling situation. If the debt ceiling isn't resolved and default becomes a real worry, many say that the bond market could be the first area to show real cracks. Some also worry that the S&P 500 could drop an additional 20%. Apple, the iPhone and iMac computer company, just got into the banking business. Apple's new high-yield <clears throat> high savings account pays 4.15% as of the filming of this video. In order to get this high-yield savings account, you must have an Apple card, and the real banking will be done through Goldman Sachs, uh, but it might be something to look into. 4.15% is a very good interest rate. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer has reportedly obtained financial records from four major banks who complied with his subpoena order. Comer claimed new information shows that as many as nine Biden family members profited off of Biden's position as vice president. He stated, this is going to get to a point very soon where the mainstream media as well as DOJ head Merrick Garland cannot continue to turn a blind eye to this. It's strange. It's illegal. There's no law that allows family members to profit from a high-ranking government official to the tune of what this family has done. However, uh, from what I have observed, uh, Merrick Garland can't seem to see any of the Biden family crimes because he can't take his eyes off of Donald Trump. CEO uh, Jamie Dimon, the head of Chase Bank, said publicly he believes the U.S. banking system is strong and that Americans shouldn't worry. Yes, there might be some weaker banks that have weaker balance sheets, but he doesn't believe a single American is at risk of losing their deposits. In fact, billionaire Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway has made a $1 million bet this week that not a single American would lose money on their banking deposits. So these two big juggernauts are trying to reassure the American public that the banking system is safe. Russian President Vladimir Putin has visited two regions of Ukraine to meet with commanders who are currently trying to overtake the town of Bakhmut. Putin was briefed on multiple current battle battles while personally evaluating Russia's recent progress. Despite officials stating the, tr the trip took place on April 17th, in a video documenting his visit, President Putin can be heard talking about Russia's Orthodox Easter coming up. Because Easter is celebrated on April 16th, many are saying there's no way he could have been there on the 17th. So perhaps they're lying about the dates for his safety, but either way, he has gone to Ukraine to show that he is in control. Now, Putin isn't the only one who recently took a trip to see the battlefields firsthand. Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, visited a town 43 miles from Bakhmut to be briefed as well. 
After the briefing, Zelensky continued to call for more weapons and aid from the West, which uh, led to a call with Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Zelensky is asking for another $14 billion. Zelensky stated, I had a call with Speaker McCarthy, thanked him for bipartisan support of Ukraine by Congress, outlined the situation at the front and Ukraine's urgent defense needs in armored vehicles, artillery, air defense, and aircraft. Zelensky also recently had a, a call with the French president, Emmanuel Macron, who recently decided to stay out of the Taiwan conflict between China, Taiwan, and the United States uh, because of this meeting with China's president, Xi Jinping. The call seemingly went well as Macron's foreign policy advisor has been advised to work with China and not the United States if something happens between China and Taiwan. Now, let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? France has always uh, aligned itself with the United States, and now it seems to be aligning itself with China. Let me know your thoughts down below. Despite united opposition from the West, Putin has continued to flex the strength of the Russian Federation Army. Russia just kicked off a live-fire military drill with over 25,000 soldiers. The large-scale drill includes ships, submarines, planes, and helicopters, all focused on working together to make Russia a powerhouse. So basically, they're doing war games with their new soldiers in all areas of the military. Um, this makes me think that they might be gearing up for something big against Ukraine, uh, but I'm hoping that's not the case. Now, back in Washington, D.C., former President Donald Trump has knocked Ron DeSantis regarding his handling of the feud between the governor and Disney. Trump stated, DeSantis is being absolutely destroyed by Disney. His original PR plan fizzled, so now he's going back with a new one in order to save face. Disney's next move will be announcement that no more money will be invested in Florida because of this governor. In fact, they could even announce a slow withdrawal or sell of certain properties or the whole thing. Watch, that would be a killer. Now, in a blow to Ron DeSantis, several large Republican donors have publicly announced that they will not be putting any money towards a Ron DeSantis for president campaign in 2024. Uh, perhaps they want him to wait four more years, or perhaps they believe that Trump will win the primary, so why waste the money? Or perhaps they're going to throw their money behind whoever they think has the best chance of beating Trump out. I'm not really sure, but either way, this is a huge blow to Ron DeSantis and could make him sit this next one out as he won't have the major funding needed in order to become president of the United States. Speaking of Donald Trump, the former president announced today that if he wins in 2024, he will eradicate homelessness across the United States. Trump said it's time to redirect money going to Ukraine and other countries to taking care of our veterans and the homeless. We must get these people off the street, help them find jobs, housing, mental health access, and more. We can do it if we quit sending taxpayer money to other countries. Now, this has been something in my YouTube community that has really bothered people, as I have shown just how much money the United States gives away to other countries compared to how much they are helping people here in the United States. So whether you like Trump or not, he announced that. But either way, I think we can all agree that they need to invest more money back into Americans that are needing help versus always just giving it away to foreign nations, right? Like we were giving money to Egypt and Egypt was about to give 40,000 rockets to Putin, and except for the United States stepped in and, and uh, forced their hand. Fox News and Dominion voting machines have agreed to settle their lawsuit outside of court for $787 million versus going to trial and trying to collect $1.6 billion. This is a massive sum of money as Dominion doesn't even earn $100 million a year. So basically, they just got like eight years of money by suing Fox News compared to just running their business. In my last interview about a week ago with Gerald Salente, head of the Trends Journal, he mentioned the next big crisis that will hit if there is a recession will come from the commercial real estate industry. 
Well, just today, Brookfield defaulted on $161 million of debt as the office vacancy problem in Washington, D.C. continues. Now, hopefully, this isn't a huge trend, but according to the head of the Trends Journal, this is only the beginning. So if you have money in REITs or you're invested in commercial real estate, do keep your eye on what could be coming down the pike. Mexico's president, uh, Manuel Lopez Obrador, has just criticized the DEA for reportedly spying on Mexican authorities to gain insight regarding the Mexican drug cartels. Lopez stated that America intruded by listening in on communications and by sending informants into his country. Lopez called these acts intrusion and an act of espionage. Well, <laughs> sorry, Mexico, the United States is spying on everybody, and the leaked Pentagon Papers prove that. So anyway, Mexico's not very happy right now. All right, now this could make you happy. At the end of this month, Casey and I are giving away $10,000 in cash, thanks to generous video sponsors. One of you is going to win $5,000. This is life-changing money, I promise. And five of you are going to win $1,000, which is no small amount of money, and you can spend it however you want. We're so excited to be able to give that away, and I'll make sure to leave a link down below. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Hey, do me a favor. Check out this video right here. It's full of really great information, and hit that subscribe button because I want to keep you in the loop. Now, thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you on the next video.